Baofeng GT5R, advertised as an FCC-compliant, clean output Baofeng for the ham radio operator in the USA. I'm going to put this thing on a tiny SA and just see how clean it is. Let's go. Okay, so I picked up this Baofeng earlier this year. I just kind of have been lax about making a video about it, but it is a UV5R. It's actually a GT5R, but up here at the title it says UV5R FCC compliant version. So in other words, it's locked down. It's locked down to the ham band. I just tried to transmit in the GMRS band. It would not transmit in the GMRS band, so it is just amateur radio, dual band, 128 channels, very basic Baofeng radio. But if you're looking for a clean signal, because I do get lots of comments in the videos that I make from people saying that they don't want to use a radio that doesn't have a clean signal. And I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. If your radio has a dirty signal, that basically means it's transmitting on more than one frequency at a time. So whatever frequency you set it to, when you key down the button, it's transmitting on that frequency, and it might also be transmitting on one, two, or three other frequencies at the same time that are harmonics of whatever frequency you're on. So what does that mean? Well, basically, besides the fact that it's it might splatter on your computer speakers or your touchscreen lamp, turn it off and on, or something else in the house, another radio perhaps, if you're concerned about being direction found in your radio, then do you think it's going to be easier to find someone who's transmitting on one frequency at a time or someone who's transmitting on four frequencies at the same time? Okay, so a clean signal is always a good thing. Whether you understand it or agree with that or not, a clean signal is always a good thing. So let's take a look at this real quick. I've set this on the desk with a couple other radios just for a size reference. This is the GT5R. So far, the only thing I don't like about this radio, this is the UV5R Mini, this is the GT5R, which is about the same size as a regular, um, I, actually, I think it's exactly the same form factor as a UV5R, the original UV5R. This is the GT5R Pro, actually. This is my BTEC 5x3 tri-band in a specialized case here. I got this from Nordic Development Industries. It's just a 3D printed case, but it protects all your buttons, and it makes the radio stand up a lot better. This radio here has a problem standing up on its own because of this extra tall antenna, because it's a tri-band antenna. So I've been really enjoying this case that I've had for the last few days. But again, I just wanted to do that as a size comparison to see the sizes of all these. This one's called a Mini, and it's got a bigger screen and not that much more Mini than, <laughs> than the regular 5R. But the only thing I don't like about this so far, there's no USB-C on the battery or on the side of the radio, or anything like that. It's your standard PTT right here. Extra button right there that uh, turns on the flashlight. Right there. Standard Kenwood K connector on the side over here for a speaker mic or headset or whatever. And just the regular battery with no USB-C. Now, you can, of course, trade this battery out. There's hundreds of batteries that are made for the UV5R form factor radios, and you can easily trade that out and put an extended battery on it. That's what I have on here right now. I have an extended battery on this radio, USB-C port on the bottom of that battery. That's the extended extra tall battery for the UV5R form factor radio, and you can put that on numerous radios, including this one. So basically what I want to do today is I want to take this. Everybody's seeing the Baofeng menu, VFO and memory channel there, top and bottom band there band selection. You can change bands with that when you're in um, VFO mode there. Menu key goes through all the menus, 40 menus in that menu system right there. So this is the standard. There's nothing special about this. This is the standard. Most everyone has ever seen it. And if you haven't seen it for whatever reason, there's numerous videos on YouTube about going through the Baofeng menu. So we're not going to do that today. I'm going to put this on my tiny SA, which is right here. Put this on my tiny SA, and we're going to see what it looks like with um, with a spectral purity test. So stand by. So we've got this hooked up to the tiny SA, and we're going to do, let's see. One thing I didn't look at is to see TXP is low and high only. Okay, so we're going to leave it on high. It's supposed to be a 5-watt radio. This is a 10-watt attenuator, so it'll handle up to 10 watts. I don't really like to get close to that with radios that might supersede 10 watts too much. But I'm um, going to measure. We're going to do harmonic 146.52 megahertz. 
megahertz. And then we're going to go back in. We're going to go to level EXT gain minus 40 times 1. Like that. And then I'm going to key up right here. And we're on the top band, 146.52. All right, we got a harmonic in there. Not so clean. Got a second harmonic around... Oh, 300, uh, 290 megahertz, 295 looks like. And it's up to negative 20, yeah, about negative 20. You want it to be below negative 30, so like negative 40 is ideal. Okay, not that great, actually. Some of the radios I've tested recently have tested much better than that. And... I was really thinking that this one with the quote-unquote FCC compliant version, blah, 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 I was thinking that it would be better. Apparently not. 446 dot megahertz, 446 dot megahertz there. Level, nope, come on. Level EXT gain minus 40 times 1 per minus 40 dB. And we're going to, yep, TXP power is high. Exit. There we go, 446.0. There it goes. Okay, that's not so bad. It's got an eighth harmonic way up there at like 2.9 gigahertz, but it's basically right at negative 30. And several of the radios I've tested recently have been that way. They've had an eighth harmonic up there. Around the 2.9 gigahertz range, it goes away after a few minutes if you keep it keyed down. This one seems to be staying there, which is fine. But you can see the there's not a barb here and there. So, okay, a little bit cleaner on 440 than on 2 meters. Wish it was a little bit cleaner than that as far as something is supposed to be FCC compliant. Uh, but that's what we've got. So let's put it on the power meter and see what kind of power it's doing. Before we put this thing on the power meter to see what kind of power it's outputting, hopefully it's close to 5 watts. It, it is a, advertises a 5-watt radio. If you're interested in getting started in ham radio or getting your next upgrade to your ham radio license, check out hamradioprep.com. They have a free app you can download on your smartphone right now and get started today for completely free, Android and iOS. Download Ham Radio Prep and get started. If you choose to purchase the upgraded package with more information and better videos and whatnot... Use the coupon code of Jason20 to always save 20% off of Ham Radio Prep. They've been a sponsor of this channel for a couple years now, and they've gotten hundreds, maybe thousands of people licensed through their efforts over the last two years that I've been promoting and advertising them, and I'm grateful to them for their support of this channel, and I'm in and encouraged by the number of people they've gotten licensed. So check out Ham Radio Prep. Link in the description below, Jason20, as the coupon code. And thank you, Ham Radio Prep, for sponsoring the channel. Okay, so now I've got this hooked up over here, and we're still on 446.0 and still on high power. So let's just go ahead and, and put it right there and see what it's doing. Okay, 3.7 watts. That's kind of what I was expecting to see out of a radio that's advertised as 5 watts, but on the 440 band. So let's change that to 146. 146.520. We're still on the top band right there on high power. No way. 2.6 watts. Ouch. That's terrible. Okay. Wow. I thought I was doing something wrong. 2.6 watts. Okay. We're on high power. TXP high. Let's go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it down on low and see what it does. Yep. 0 0.75 watts. And then high power. 2.6 watts. Ouch! That's terrible. That's absolutely terrible. For a radio that is dirty... On the 2-meter harmonic, I would have thought it was doing more power than it should. I was expecting to see 5.5, 6, maybe 6.5 six watts out of that for something that's transmitting at both 146 and around 290 at the same time, 290 megahertz at the same time. Wow, not that great. Okay, so I wouldn't really recommend it. Let me, let me, let me phrase this correctly. Some of you are going to come by the comments and say you don't care about the spectral purity. You should, but okay. Your choice. But a lot of you are going to say, oh, no, I wouldn't buy that because of the low power output, which I get that. I do. 
Now, I'm guessing that we're seeing a quality control issue here. I bet some of you have this radio and have put it on a meter and have gotten four, five, six watts out of it on the VHF side, and it's working just fine for you. So I suspect we're seeing a quality control issue here because not everything that comes out of the factory, even though it has the same model number, is QC'd correctly. Okay, and that's just a thing that you do. Or that's just a thing that we see, rather. So... There are much better options out. This is not a terrible choice, but there are much better options out there. This was a sub twenty dollar radio. This radio was nineteen, yeah, at seventeen percent off at the time of this recording, nineteen ninety nine, and you know, so it's just not a high dollar radio. But you can, for not much money more, you can get a much better radio with more options, something that will transmit outside of the amateur radio band if you want that sort of thing, MERS, GMRS, FRS, and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm not telling you to do that, but you know. Make your own choice. So how many of you have this radio, and have you put it on a meter? That's what I want to know. Do you have the GT5R? Have you put it on a meter? And if so, what results did you get? I was surprised to see only 2.5 watts out of VHL. So probably won't be using this one much myself. Okay. Put a comment below. Let me know what you think about this radio if you do own one. And check out the videos over here next because YouTube thinks that's what you want to watch next. 73, and we'll catch you next time.